We present The Toff on the Farm, a radio serial in six parts, dramatised by Roy Lomax from the novel by John Creasy. Starring Terence Alexander as The Toff, with Robert Dawning as Johnny. Part two, Dead on Arrival. Now, let me get this right, Miss Selby. This money on the table here, it belongs to the man who's just driven off. Yes. It's a lot of money to leave behind. Well, £10,000, he said. That's about right, as a rough guess. Well, he wanted me to take it as a deposit. You've sold him the farm? Uh, no, Monty, I haven't. But he wanted to buy. He was very keen. Well, what do you make of it, Richard? Chap goes tearing off like a maniac and leaves all this money. Yeah, it's a bit of a mystery, isn't it? Wait a minute. Gillian, you said he was in here when we came to the front door. Yes. Do you remember, Richard, when I introduced you to Gillian, I said... I know, you he... said, meet the toff. Well, he could have heard me, couldn't he? Well, I suppose so. It's a thought, Richard. Yeah, absolutely. Well, I don't understand. Why should that make any difference, calling you the toff? <laughs> it's a long story, Miss Selby. It's just that I spend a little of my time dabbling in the odd spot of crime detection. And he's damn good. But I don't need a detective. Of course you don't, Miss Selby. And despite Monty here, my visit down here is purely social, I assure you. But it's just as well we came. What was that chap's name again? Uh, Lodwin, that's what he said. Are you sure? Oh, I didn't ask for any identification. Well, there's no reason why you should. Lodwin, Lodwin, now, that doesn't ring any bells. You've never heard of him? Well, I don't know everyone, Monty. Well, I'd still like to know why he went off just like that. It was a bit strange, I admit. There may be a perfectly reasonable explanation. We, we really shouldn't jump to conclusions. What did he look like, Gillian? Well, middle-aged. In his fifties, I suppose. Rather stocky, wearing a dark brown suit. I assumed he was a solicitor. He looked like one. Well, Richard? He probably was a solicitor, Monty. He wanted to buy the farm, he well, practically demanded to buy it. In fact, there was another man here. He left just before you arrived. Well, they, they both had a, a bit of a to-do, you know. What do you mean? Well, Mr Lodwin was trying to persuade me to sell, and, well, he, he got overexcited and grabbed my arm. He didn't hurt you? Oh, oh no, not really. Anyway, Mr Brandt grabbed him and, and made him apologise. Brandt? Uh, that's the other chap? Yes, an American. He was after the farm, too. Well, good job he was here. Oh, a bit frightening, though. He really went for Mr Lodwin. Yes, you're having an eventful day, Miss Selby. You know, Richard, it's a, it's a good job that I asked you to take on this case. What case? What do you mean? Yes, Monty, that's a good question. Oh, come on, Richard. Yes, but there really isn't a case, Monty. One or two little question marks, perhaps. Well, I did hope that you'd be able to help, I Gillian. I don't need any help. Surely, Richard, there must be something uh, you no, can really, do. No, really, Mr Rollison. Miss Selby, why don't we try to clear up at least one of these question marks? Well, I'd rather... I'm you... not going to interfere in your affairs, I promise you. Well, I don't know. Now, may I use your phone? Well... I just want to ring home. Have a word with my man, Jolly, all right? Yes, all right, Mr Rollison. Thank you. It may not amount to anything, but you never know. What do you want to find out, Richard? Well, let's just wait and see. Just an idea. This is Mr. Richard Rollison's residence. This is a recording. Will you please record your message after you hear the tone? And Mr. Rollison will hear it when he returns this evening. Oh, it's me, Jolly. Um, someone I'd like you to check on, if you would. Name of Lodwin. L-O-D-W-I-N. It's a rather uncommon name, I think. I can't tell you much about him, I'm afraid. In his fifties, stocky, could be a solicitor, accountant, professional man. Anyway, see if you can dig up any more about him, would you? Thanks. I'll see you later. Pity Jolly's out at the moment. Is that all you need to say? What, check up on Lodwin? Well, don't expect too much, Monty. It may not come to anything at all, but he'll do his best. Well, there's a start, isn't it, Gillian? Yes. Oh, by the way, how's your leg? No, oh, playing up a bit, but nothing to worry about. Oh, good. Does it give you much trouble, Monty? Well, a tin leg's not like the one you were born with. No. <laughs> Incidentally, any news of Alan? Has he turned up yet? Uh, no. But you did phone round. Uh, where he might have gone? No. Well, I... Why not? I thought you were worried about I him. I was, but, well, you know... Your two visitors kept you busy, I imagine. Yes, yes, they did. Uh, Mr well, Rollison, that's right. Can we help to look for him? Uh, no, Monty, I I'm sure he's all right. So you have heard from him? Yes, I... I mean... Well, not exactly. Gillian, what do you oh, mean? Monty, please, will you stop going on at me? <laughs> please leave me alone, will you, please? Well, what the devil have I said now? Not Monty. <laughs> Oh, it's awful. It's simply awful. I... 
I wish I could tell you, but I can't. Oh, that's all right, Jilly. That's all right. Now, please don't distress yourself. I want to tell somebody. I really do. I'd like to help if you'll let me. I, I don't know. I... It's your brother, isn't it? Something's happened to him. I, I don't think so. At least I'm not sure. You tell me about it. I said I'd like to help you. Do you think you could? Yes. Well, this man telephoned. He said some dreadful things. Go on. He said if I didn't do as I was told and keep my mouth shut, something terrible would happen to Alan. And what did he want you to do? Well, he told me not to sell the farm to anybody. Not till he'd been here to see me. He's coming here? Yes. This afternoon, he said. Then God help him, eh, Richard? Now, hold on, Monty. Did he ask you for any money? No. Anyway, I haven't much money. It's all tied up in the farm. Oh, but he can have the lot, everything. Yes. Well, I think we've got the picture and Alan in exchange for the farm. It must be an interesting property. I can't wait to get my hands on this character. Oh, Monty, can't you understand? I have to do what I'm told. If anything should happen to us... Yes, of course. You've got to follow instructions. Now, look here, Richard. If, if you think I'm going to leave Gillian here alone... We've no alternative. He won't come if he sees Gillian has visited. But, Richard, now, we... don't worry. Gillian, do you think you can cope with him? Well, I think so. I'll try. Good girl. Now, that pub in the village, is it comfortable? Yes. Oh, that's where we're going, Monty. I don't understand. Well, don't try. And, by the way, we mustn't forget all this beautiful money. Oh, what do you think I ought to do? Have you got a safe or a good hiding place around here? Uh, oh, yes. There is a little secret place down in the cellar. Good. Well, you hide it away there just for the time being. Who knows? Mr Lodwin may return to claim his £10,000. <laughs> now, come on, Monty. Go on, girl. Keep moving. Get, get up. Get up there. They won't hold you up more than a minute, sir. Oh, that's quite all right. They take their own time. They do that. There's more than some would say. Nice day we're having. Indeed it is. Should be nice down at the coast. That's where you're making for. Well, actually, I'm looking for a place near here. Selby Farm. Oh, well, nearly there, sir. Go on down through the village along a bit and down the hill. About two miles, I reckon. Thank you. Can I get petrol at the village? Can that. Right between the pub and the bank. Depends on whether you're a spender or a saver. Go on, Rosie. Right, oh, sir. You can get past now. Morning to you. Morning. <laughs> if you just come through here, gentlemen. Yes, certainly. Here you are, sir. Will this be all right for you? It couldn't be better, eh, Monty? Nice, comfortable armchairs. I should have to close the bar soon, sir. But if you and your friend want to rest for a while, that'll be all right with me. Oh, thanks very much. And I think um, oh, two large brandies, please. Right, sir. Now, listen here, Richard. You sit I... down. Make yourself comfortable. Oh, oh very well. <clears throat> Look, Richard, I'm worried about Gillian. Well, don't be. The poor girl over in that cottage by herself. We should have stayed. No, it's too risky. That man who's going to visit, he expects her to be alone. For all we know, he may have been watching the place. He may have seen us there. Well, I don't know. Well, if he did, and if he's followed us, we're in the pub having a drink, aren't we? Here we are, gentlemen. Two large brandies. Ah, thank you. Uh, will there be anything else before we close? Uh, yes, same again. Oh, uh, well, no, you better make it one this time. I'll do that, sir. Can you see anyone out in the street? Well, no one I'd suspect. Anyway, he may not be here. But it was better to be on the safe side. Oh, we can't just stick around here doing nothing. I don't intend to, but I want you to stay here for a while. Oh, because of this damn tin leg of mine? Oh, of course not. I wouldn't hurt to give it a rest. No, Monty, I'd rather do this little job on my own. What job? What are you going to do? Now, wait a minute. What is it? I don't believe. Look, excuse me a moment, will you? I won't be long, Monty. Well, I'll be damned. Good afternoon, sir. Charlie, you <laughs> Devil, what are you doing here? Quite a coincidence, isn't it, sir? I never know with you. How on earth did you find me? I was going to Selby Farm. But you did mention, in passing, the village of Little Dunstead, and I had to stop here for petrol. I suppose it was more a matter of you finding me, sir. You're a cunning old bloodhound. Yes, sir. Anyway, what's wrong? Oh, nothing wrong, sir. Just urgent. Incidentally, I took the liberty of using your other car. Yes, of course, go on. Superintendent Grice telephoned you from Scotland Yard. 
He would like you to attend in court the day after tomorrow. Oh, yes, yes. It's the um, Euston Road bank robbery case. That's right, sir. He wishes you to be a police witness. Well, I half expected that. You did help to apprehend the villains. Yes, well, look, you can um, ring Bill Grice. Tell him I'll see him in court. Very well, sir. I shall go back to London directly. No, not just yet. I'd like you to come with me. A little stroll through the woods. Do you the world of good? I'm hardly dressed for the country, sir. Oh, that's all right. I'm sure the country won't be offended. I was just going to have a quick word with Mr. Morn before we go. I won't be a moment. <laughs> Sorry to dash off like that, Monty. Yes, what's Jolly doing down here? Oh, an urgent message. Um, look, I I'm just going off with him for a while. What about Gillian? Now, you just take it easy. I won't be too long. Just uh, listen, Richard. Don't uh... worry. She'll be all right. Here we are, sir. Hmm? Your brandy. Oh, yes, sir. Uh, thank you. And uh, have a drink for yourself. Thank you very much, sir. Bert? Yeah? Can you spare a minute? Come in. Thanks again, sir. Yeah. You're more than welcome. Excuse me, sir. Yes? Would your name be Mr. Morn? Yes, that's right. Well, there's a gentleman wants to know if you'll step outside and have a word with him. Oh, I wish he'd make up his mind. Beg your pardon, sir? Oh, my friend, Mr. Rollison. Oh, it's not him, sir. Not the gentleman who came in with you. Huh? This is an American. An American? And he asked for me by name? That's right, sir. And he'd like to speak to you outside, if you wouldn't mind, sir. Oh. Now, if you'll excuse me, it's closing time. Uh, I'd better shut up shop or I'll be in trouble with the law. Come along, Jolly. You're falling behind. Oh, I'm afraid I am, sir. Oh, it's a soft life, you know, taking its toll. Maybe, sir. But I feel I'm not naturally equipped for this type of expedition. Oh! Now, what is it? Oh, an overhanging branch. I failed to see it in time. You should have been a brownie. Yes, sir. Hmm. Excellent training for this sort of thing, you know. <laughs> so I believe. Oh! Uh, what are you doing down there? It was not of my choosing, sir. Oh, I see. You caught your foot in a rabbit hole. Here, let's give you a hand up. There Thank we are. You, sir. Oh. Oh. <sighs> You're all right. No ankle strain. I don't think so, sir. Good. Anyway, we're practically through the worst. Thank goodness. Oh, excuse me, sir. Is that Selby Cottage just up ahead? Oh, yes. Yes, so it is, and, uh, and that's the farm over to the left. I see it. Excuse me, but what are you looking for? I don't see any cars, do you, Johnny? No, sir. I probably got here in time, then. For what, sir? Miss Selby. She lives in the cottage. She's expecting a visitor, and I want to be here when he arrives. Then our expedition was not made just to view the farm. No, Johnny. <laughs> I think you're afraid I may buy the place. <laughs> More apprehensive, I think, sir. <laughs> you can relax for the moment. Miss Selby's already had two very good offers from two very determined men. I see. They seem fairly straightforward, but I'm not sure. This third visitor, well, he's a different kettle of fish altogether. Really, sir? And could be a hard case. I think he may have kidnapped Miss Selby's brother. Good gracious. The brother for the farm, if you see what I mean. I do indeed, sir. And I take it you require my help with this third visitor? That was my original intention, but on second thoughts, I'd like you back in London. Yes, sir. I left a message for you to check on a man called Lodwin. There could be something there. Anyway, do what you can, will you? I will, sir. Good man. Uh, do you think you can find your way back to the car? Through the undergrowth? Afraid, sir, Jolly. But... <laughs> oh, God, don't want to frighten our visitor away now, do we? Very well, sir. I shall do my best to retrieve... Yeah, hold still a minute. Sir? The car. Look, do you see it? Turning in from the road? Oh, yes, sir. I wonder. Could be our visitor. He's certainly heading towards the cottage. Yes. Yeah. OK, Jolly, off you go. Yes, sir. Yeah, and please keep your head down. Don't want to give my position away, now. Yes? You Miss Selby? Yes, I am. Well, here I am, then, as promised. He... You're the man who telephoned. Right, first time, darling. My brother, how is he? Nice little place you got here. No neighbours to bother you? Yeah, I like it. Look, I'm worried about him. And what about you, eh? Very nice. Please, you said you had a message from Alan. Did I? I don't remember you saying... You did, you told me on the telephone. <laughs> it's all right. Now, don't panic, I was only joking. Oh, please. All right, then. If you want to talk business, pity. 
I was enjoying the scenery. Well... One thing. You are on your own? Yes. I mean, no company, like I told you. There's no one else here, I promise. How your brother would like that. Shows you care about him. Well, I'll come in, then. Well, can't we talk out here? Excuse me, Miss Selby. Uh, oh. Ah, so this is where your brother lives. Very cosy. Bit different to where he is right now. He is all right. Yeah, of course he is, up to now. Anyway, do him good to rough it a bit. Make a man out of him. But you're going to let him come home. That depends. Know what I mean? All right. How much do you want, Mr... No, you call me Charlie. All my mates call me Charlie. Tell me, how much? How much do you think he's worth? Well, I'm not rich. I, I mean, I haven't much cash. Oh, that's a pity. Well, there's only the farm. But that's all I have. Well, there you are, then. What are you worried about? I mean, that's the answer, isn't it? A farm's worth a lot of loot, you know. Well, I, I don't know. Tell you what, darling. You sell the farm to me, and when the deal's gone through, you get your brother back. I'll settle for that. How about you? No, but the farm's occupied. There's a tenant. He won't move out. Oh, he'll be no bother, darling. Not to me. You'd be surprised. So what about it? Well, I... Well, keep thinking about your brother. What might happen to him? And you'll really pay me for the farm? Of course, darling. We've got to make it legal, haven't we? When we've agreed on a price, I give you the money, you sign the farm over to me, just like normal. Well, I don't understand. Only difference is, you see... When the deal's gone through, you give the money back to me. And I send your brother home safe and sound, and everybody's happy. But how do I know you'll let Alan come home? You don't. But that's the way it'll be, darling. Don't you worry. Now, how much do you want for the place? Well, I was offered £80,000 just this morning. Were you now? For immediate possession. Yeah, that figures. Well, I'd better match that, hadn't I? Anyway, I mean, eighty, ninety, hundred thousand. It's going to come out the same for you and me, isn't it? How about fixing on 80,000, eh? And you promise you will let Alan go? That's the deal I said, didn't I? You know what's wrong with you, don't you, darling? You ought to have more trust. But by the way, who made you that other offer? Well, I can't tell you that. You keep forgetting about your brother, don't you? Well, it was a solicitor, I think. Uh, uh, Mr Lodwin. Lodwin? Mm. What's he look like? Oh, he was stocky, a thick set, probably in his mid-fifties. A bit of a city gent? Yes. And he did seem very keen to buy. <laughs> I'll bet. What is it? Him, a solicitor? <laughs> Blimey, what next? What do you think you know him? <laughs> Let's say, if it's who I think it is, you'll never get a penny out of him, and if you did, you'd never get a chance to spend it. Well, what do you mean? I don't mean nothing, except you've done better for yourself doing business with me. Now then, darling. How about sitting our little deal with a, a little kiss, eh? No. No. Oh, now, come on, you don't have to be shy no, with no, me. Please, get away now, from me. Now, come on, darling. No. Oh, just a little kiss. No, let me go, Oh, please. come on, I know you're, you're sore. Pardon me, Miss Selby. <laughs> Who the hell are you? Oh, Mr. Pratt. Yeah, it's like I said, ma'am, I came back. I just happened to see in through the window. Looked like you were having a rough time. None of your business, mate. Clear off. Now, what do you say, Miss oh. Selby? Uh, thank you, but it's all right. Are you sure? You heard what she said, mate. Look, I'm talking to Miss Selby. Look, darling, did you tell him I was coming here? No, I didn't. It's the truth. It better be. Right, then, tell him to get out of here or else. I think it would be best, Mr. Brandt. Miss Selby, your blouse is torn. Uh, it was an accident. Yes, I saw. Look, that. mate, are you going to clear off or do I have to use this? Yeah, no, it's a I'd knife. I'd like to see you try, no, friend. I... Well, you've asked for it, mate. <laughs> Now, drop it. Drop it. That's better. Now. I guess that'll keep him quiet for a while. But your hand. It's bleeding. Oh, it's not too bad. It's just a scratch. Well, it needs a dressing. I've got some in the kitchen. I won't oh, be a minute. Thanks. And if you got some rope or cord, I'll tie up Sleeping Beauty. I'll find something. Gillian. Who's that? Shh. Richard, what are you doing here? How did you get in? The back door. You really shouldn't leave it unlocked, you know. Did you hear? It's been terrible. Yes, I was about to come in. Your Mr. Branch just beat me to it. Oh, come in and meet him. No, no, no. I'd rather stay here a little longer, see what develops. Miss Selby. Go back to him. Oh, won't be a second. Oh, and tell him about Alan. Why? It'll be interesting to see his reaction. And don't tell him that I'm here. All right. Oh, good. You've found something. Will this be strong enough? Yes, that's just fine. I'll just put this dressing on your hand first. Right. There. Ah. Ah. 
There you are. Thanks. Now, let's truss up our turkey, shall we? Oh, you know, I'm so thankful you came when you did. Glad I was able to help. Oh, and you were right, you know. How do you mean? About this man. Oh, he was horrible. But I couldn't tell you everything. Mm. Not while he was so angry. I guess there was something. You were acting kind of strange. Well, the truth is, I daren't antagonize him. You see, my brother's been kidnapped. What? And this man came here to arrange the ransom. What was he asking, Miss Selby? Well, he wants the farm. Oh, Does he? Oh. Uh, hold on, hold on. I think he's coming round. Well, he's going to be disappointed, isn't he? But you don't understand. My brother... This man may be one of a gang. You leave it to me, Miss Selby. You... You... Oh, oh, you... Can you hear me, mister? Can you... you blasted... This young lady wants to know where her brother is. Well, she'll have to want... And you're going to tell her. Go to hell. He's going to need a little persuasion, ma'am. Uh, would you hand me that knife? Yeah, what are you going to do? Thanks. Now, we don't have Mr. much Brand, time, so I'd be grateful if you'd step outside, ma'am. It's not very pleasant, but it won't take long. No, no, wait, wait. Don't leave me with him. I think he's going to save us a lot of trouble, Miss Selby. Look, I'll make a deal with you. If you let me go, I'll tell you where to find her brother. No, no, you got it the wrong way, mister. You tell me where the brother is, and he'd better be alive. Then I may let you go. That's the only deal you get from me. Okay, okay. He's at Brighton, in a boarding house, and he's alive all right. You, you've got to believe me. How far is this Brighton from here? Uh, less than an hour by car. Right. Now, what's the address? Norton Street, number 51. Th that's all I can tell you. Well, it had better check out. It, it will, I promise. Oh, it's just one more thing. Why do you want the farm? I don't know. Honest. I still have the knife, mister. No, honest. I was just paid to put pressure on the girl, and that's the truth. Please, Mr. Brad. At least we know where Alan is. I'd like to get to Brighton as soon as possible. Well, I guess this guy will keep for a while. Uh, do you have some place where I can lock him up until we get back? Uh, there's a small box room at the top of the stairs. There's a lock on the door. Well, I'll get him up there before we leave. Come on, you. <laughs> I'll be down in a minute, ma'am. Richard? Yes. You heard? Yes, every word. You're both going to Brighton to find Alan. Yes. Look, can you keep him here for a while, delay him? Oh, is it important? Well, I just need time enough to get back to the village to pick up my car and Monty. What are you going to do? Get to Brighton as fast as I can. But, Richard... Look, you will do that for me, please. And all being well, I'll see you later at 51 Norton Street. Oh, but, Richard... I don't see how we'll get to Brighton before them. It depends on Gillian's delaying tactics, but we certainly don't have any time to spare. Well, then I'd better not hold you up. Hmm? I'm sorry, old chap, I don't quite follow. Should have told you before, but it's this leg. I'm afraid the scar's opened up. Oh, no. Is it bad? Not good. It hurts like hell. I, I think it needs looking at. Damn, of all things. Well, I, I, I'm sorry, Richard. No, no, Monty, no, no, it's not your fault. I, I just want to get to Brighton before they do. Well, look, why don't you drop me off somewhere along the road? You can press on. Certainly not. Well, I'll be all right. My dear Monty, I wouldn't dream of it. If you need to see a doctor urgently, then we'll make sure you get to one. Seven, forty-nine, fifty-one. Oh, well, this is it. But he said it was a boarding house. Yeah, I must admit I've seen better. You sure it's the right place? This is it, five one Norton Street. That man, he could have given us a false address to put us off. And he's got big trouble coming to him, but I don't think so. What should we do? Well, let's knock on the door and see what happens from there. Now that's real friendly leaving the door open for us. Hello, anyone at home? Hello there. What do you think? I think we might as well invite ourselves inside. Uh, no, uh, I'll have a look around. You stay out here. If you're going in, I'm coming with you. All right, but stay close. I will. Hi there. Anyone here? No? Well, no, nothing in here. There's no furniture, just that bit of old carpet. Hmm. Let's try this one. Yeah, same in here. Room's empty. But he did say it was a boarding house. There should be someone about. Can you imagine anyone wanting to stay here? No, it's filthy. No one's lived here for ages. Well, uh, 
Some people might call this a kitchen. Yeah, I know what you mean. <laughs> well, there are two more floors. Better check them out. I don't think he was telling us the truth. About your brother? Yes. Yeah, I'm beginning to wonder. Well, I mean, we surely have found some signs of life. I reckon so. Anyway. Well? Don't come in. What is it? No, stay there. Well, why should I... It's Alan, isn't it? No. It is. I know it is. Please let me see. I said no. But you must, please. Miss Selby, that is not your brother but in there. But you don't know, Alan, what he looks like. Now, listen to me. I know that man in there, and it is not your brother. Hello? Well, who's that? That's all we need right now. Hello, uh... Uh, Oh, it's all right. It's a friend. Uh-huh. Richard, we're up here. The first floor. Coming. How in hell did he know? Thank goodness you're here. Sorry I couldn't make it sooner. I had to take Monty to hospital. Is he all right? Yeah, trouble with his leg, I'm afraid. Oh, you're Mr. Brandt, I take it. Yes. Oh, I'm sorry. Richard Rollison, Mr. Brandt. Red Brandt. Uh, glad to know you. And please call me Red. <laughs> oh, yes, the hair. That's right, sir. Richard, what are we going to do? Mr. Brandt's... Uh, Red's found something. Somebody in this room. He doesn't want me to see. Does the sight of a dead man worry you, sir? I have seen quite a few in my time, I'm afraid. Then you might like to take a look. Oh, Gillian, it... Uh, no, it's not, Alan. Oh, thank God. Well, if you'd excuse me. Red, you hmm. said just now you recognize the man in there. Yes. Well, then who is it? Would I know him? Well, you met him a few hours ago. He came to buy your farm. Well, it's not Mr. Lodwin. That's right. No, but what's he doing here? Now search me. And you're sure there's no sign of Alan? Not in that room, there isn't. Well, Mr. Rollison... Just as well you didn't let Gillian go in there. It's a very messy job. Still, it was bound to happen to that fellow sooner or later. What do you mean? Well, that particular gentleman's been dodging the law for years. Just that bit too clever to get caught or was one step ahead of trouble. Trouble sure caught up with him today. Yeah, sort of rough justice, I suppose. How long has he been dead, do you think? One, two hours, I'd say, no more. But you recognised him, Richard. There's hardly a policeman in this country who wouldn't recognise Gus Fenner. Gus Fenner? But that's not... Why, uh, why is that, Mr. Rollison? He worked with the really big crime syndicates. Made a lot of money. Very clever man. Not small time, then. Oh, just the opposite. It had to be very big if Gus was involved. But, Richard, that's the man who came to see me. Isn't that right, Rich? Yes. Well, when was that? Earlier today. He's the one who went off when you arrived with Monty. He left that money, you remember? Mr. Lodwin. You mean Gus Fenner was your Mr. Lodwin? Yes. I see. Now, that could account for his sudden departure. He may have recognised me... Well, uh, and you say he wanted to buy Selby Farm? Oh, I told you, he was very keen. Too keen for my liking. Yes. Well, if that's the case, I think we ought to move rather carefully from here on. How do you mean? Well, Gillian, knowing Gus Fenner and the kind of jobs he did, there has to be something about your farm that is very, very special. That was part two of The Toff on the Farm. A serial for radio dramatised by Roy Lomax from the novel by John Creasy. Starring Terence Alexander as the Toff with Robert Dorning as Jolly. Gillian Selby was played by Heather Stoney, Monty Morn by Terence Hardiman, Charlie and Bert by Frank Jarvis and Red Brandt by Ed Bishop. The producer was John Fawcett Wilson. <laughs>